Electrolyte disturbances, guys, are so awesome. Like, when David and I talk, half of our conversations about, are about how we love electrolyte abnormalities, okay? So, let's talk a little bit about the most common electrolyte abnormalities, okay? The highest yield that you need to know are going to be sodium, specifically hyponatremia and hypernatremia, potassium, hypokalemia, and especially hyperkalemia. Let's talk about hypernatremia. I've really organized this in your guys' packets in a good way, i.e. presentation, what are we going to do for treatment, and what is the uh, important USMLE points. So hypernatremia can be caused by different things. Hypernatremia can be caused by, hey, I basically, hypernatremia can be caused by, I basically am losing too much volume. If I'm losing too much volume, right? If I'm losing too much volume, what happens to my sodium in my body? If I'm losing so much volume, my sodium levels in my body go up, right? If I'm losing a lot of liquid, so how about this? Dehydration, diarrhea, why doctors? Why does doctors cause hypernatremia? Because how many people have been in the hospital? Oh yeah, just push some normal saline or keep that kid on normal saline forever, right? That, that's why doctors can also cause hypernatremia as well. So these are the causes of hypernatremia. And how patients present with hypernatremia are typically they're gonna be really thirsty and they have a dry physical exam, i.e. their skin turgor is going to be off, their capillary refill is gonna be off, and that's because they're losing a lot more fluid than they are sodium. Okay? Now, if you get rapid hypernatremia, you can get altered mental status, and you, because your sodium defines your uh, osmolarity, you get concurrent high osmolarity. So what's going to be the treatment for hypernatremia? Well, the treatment for hypernatremia is pretty much going to be fluids, okay? And that's if you're hypovolemic, you really want to give fluids if you're hypovolemic and hypernatremic. Now we're thinking like, like the, the, uh, the big guys because hypovolemic, hypernatremia, those are two sexy terms that you can put together and really define a patient's both volume status and electrolyte status. So you don't want to go high to low too fast. Why don't you want to go high to low or normal sodium too fast? Because that's going to cause you to have increased risk of cerebral edema. So high to low, the brain will blow. So high to low, the brain will blow, i.e. the brain swells up. Let's talk about its friend, hyponatremia. Hyponatremia, one of the causes that we talked about was SIDH. And again, all of these electrolyte abnormalities, and particularly sodium, we're talking about what? Defining via volume status, right? Hypervolemic hypernatremia, hyponatremia. Doesn't hypervolemic hyponatremia, what does that resonate to you? That says, wow, I got a lot of fluid on board, and because I have a lot of fluid on board, I am going to dilute my sodium concentrations or my serum osmolarity. So hypervolemic causes are going to be things like congestive heart failure, renal failure, cirrhosis, nephrotic syndrome. Again, you are going to be very volume heavy, and thus you are diluting your sodium and your hyponatremic. Now, you can also get hypovolemic hyponatremia, and in hypovolemic hyponatremia, basically, you're just losing both water and sodium, i.e. in skin loss, diarrhea, vomiting, you're losing both, okay? So it's all about the clinical context, and honestly, guys, for your USMLE, they're pretty, they're pretty obvious as to what they want you to know about hypo or hypernatremia. How do patients present? Confusion, coma, convulsions. You know, we, I, I just had a patient who came into the ICU and the mom wasn't mixing the formula properly just to stretch the formula a little bit, okay? And the mom, um, you know, kept putting free water or water into the formula more than the formula and was giving it to the baby to drink. But because baby's kidneys are so immature, what happened? The baby came in just seizing its brains out because mom was not making the formula properly and giving them too much free water. And they come increasingly hyponatremic. I mean, this is a real world scenario and it could be a testable scenario as well. Okay, so what is going to be the treatment of hyponatremia? You guys, I know you're close to lunch, but you can at least tell me, right, that give sodium, right? You can give, you can do water restriction if the patient you think is going to be hypervolemic, um, but the other thing that you can do is give sodium if you are going to be hyponatremic, okay? So don't go too fast with hyponatremia because if you go from low to high too quickly, what happens? 
central pontine myelinysis. So remember, your pons is in the, in, in the bottom. So low to high, the pons will die. High to low, the brain will blow. Low to high, the pons will die. High to low, the brain will blow, i.e. hypernatremia to going down too quickly can cause cerebral edema, and your hyponatremia going up too quickly can cause central pontine myelinysis. Hyperkalemia, this is like, okay, I need to take a sip of my coffee or Red Bull, and I need to really wake up for hyperkalemia, because this is a really high yield topic for you to know. Hyperkalemia, the key thing that I want you guys to realize for hyperkalemia is going to be, if I have increased amounts of cells in the body, cancer, if I have increased amounts of cells in the body, cancer, those cells are going to be potassium rich. And if those cells are potassium rich, when they pop open, boop, goes the weasel, you're going to release a lot of potassium, exactly. So things such as, uh, things such as uh, high amounts of uh, uh, cell turnover is going to cause you to become hyperkalemic. That goes along the notion that the cell is full of potassium. What about renal failure? Well, yeah, renal failure can cause you to become hyperkalemic because you don't have the regulatory organ of these electrolytes, okay? Aldosterone inhibition. Now this is really sexy, right? Because aldosterone inhibition can cause you to become hyperkalemic. Why? Because what did aldosterone do? Remember that patient was hyperaldosteronism? Aldosterone brings in sodium and makes you hypokalemic because you piss out that potassium. Well, if you have aldosterone inhibition, it's the exact opposite. Not on, not, no longer are you hypokalemic, you are hyperkalemic. And transcellular shift. I'm going to take a little bit of time talking about transcellular shift because a lot of students, if I like came up to you um, in the grocery store and I was like, hey man, do you know what acidosis causes in terms of your potassium? You'd be like, um, is it hypo, hyper? Yeah, you, you'd like stutter a little bit, okay? So let's talk a little bit about what does the transcellular shift mean when we're talking about hyperkalemia, okay? So here's your cell, right? And your cell is going to be rich in potassium, right? We talked about that. And now I want a show of hands what causes hyperkalemia? Alkalosis. So what causes hyperkalemia? Acidosis or alkalosis? How many people say acidosis? Acidosis definitely causes hyperkalemia because of transcellular shift. How many people say alkalosis? Alkalosis. Oh man, you guys are smart, right? So how do you explain this so that you don't get kind of confused? Is that when you are acidotic, think of the extracellular matrix. Think of the extracellular matrix being super, super acid rich, right? You have so much H plus here. And you know what the cell wants to do? The cell wants to protect itself. So say I was the cell, right? And the cell is rich in potassium, but I want to protect myself. And now suddenly I have so much acid around me. What I'll do is I'll say, oh my gosh, I have so much acid around me. Come on, acid, come on in, come on in, come on in, acid. So all this acid will come on in because the cell freaks out and wants to protect itself. And thus, as a response of that, in order to maintain electrochemical neutrality, your potassium says, all right, fine, I'll come out. All right, fine, I'll come out. And that's why acidosis is going to cause you to become hyperkalemic, all right? So how do patients present with, um, with uh, hyperkalemia? Patients present with basically nonspecific nausea, vomiting, intestinal cramps, proximal weakness. But the treatment of hyperkalemia is super, super high yield for you to know. Let me introduce a concept to you. Whenever you're talking about beta agonism, guys, beta agonism is related to what with potassium? Beta agonism pushes potassium into cells. Beta agonism pushes potassium into cells. Insulin is a beta agonist. Albuterol is a beta agonist. So when you're hyperkalemic, let's go through the management of hyperkalemia. I know you guys are like, well, that's step two related. No, no, no. We, you actually have to know this a little bit because it ties into normal physiology. Okay? So treatment is going to be First off, recognizing that the EKG findings could be peak T waves on your USMLE. And they can give you this as an EKG strip because peak T waves are really easy to recognize. Hyperkalemia causes peak T waves, point number one. Point number two is you want to say, wow, I have some heart arrhythmia with this. Let me stabilize the cardiac membrane. So you're going to give calcium gluconate. Now, these are the things that you're going to do to get rid of, to get rid of your potassium and 
hide the potassium because you're hyperkalemic. You're going to give insulin and glucose because remember, beta agonism, which is insulin, beta agonism pushes the potassium into cells, so it'll hide it from the, um, from the plasma. You're going to give glucose with it because you don't want to just give insulin because you'll just be hypoglycemic the whole time. You'll give sodium bicarb. And why do you want to give sodium bicarb? Okay, because sodium bicarb is going to help you have more of that transcellular shift that we were talking about. Albuterol is also important because albuterol is a beta agonist that will push the potassium into cells. And then in order to effectively take out the potassium from the body, you can give things like diuretics and you can give things um, such as uh, k exalate which is basically a potassium binder that you can excrete out of your, uh, the potassium out of your system. Hypokalemia, the key things about hypokalemia, honestly, the take home point for hypokalemia is high amounts of aldosterone. So diarrhea and vomiting, diarrhea, vomiting, diuretics, those all cause activation of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, and thus you're gonna become hypokalemic, okay? And remember, hypertension plus hypokalemia, remember to clue in on a hyperaldosterone etiology. So all of this is related to hyperaldosteronism or the fact that your kidney says where's the volume and so renin angiotensin aldosterone system is going to key uh, fire. The patient presentation is going to be weakness, muscle cramps, as well as an ileus um, and that's basically uh, your bowel not moving and the treatment is going to be yo give some potassium.